Hello everyone, my name's Pete and MMOs are really not my thing and I'm going to keep saying that no matter how much time I put into them. I'm going to further explore Final Fantasy XIV today because even though I enjoyed what I played, it was more cutscene than gameplay so let's just jump back in where we left off. If you're watching this first for whatever reason, check the description for a link to the previous video. Now I was told that I'd need better equipment last time but I speak to the NPC to be told that my gear is in fact fine and I may proceed. I don't understand but I'm pleased that I can continue. And now it turns out that I'm a trusted individual thanks to the menial tasks that I've performed. This grants me access to sensitive intel on the current operations in the area and I'm given an important recon task. Apparently the guards can't do this because their movements are watched too closely so I, a relatively unknown adventurer, will have an advantage. This seems a bit too soon to be trusted but I'll buy it for now. On my way to my objective, I cross into an active fate quest. I'm the only participating member and it all goes fine. The reward system's based on how active you were in working towards the goal and since there was only me, I get full credit. There's a nice little experience boost and the combat loop's enjoyable enough. Doing these things has value, but nothing on the actual quest, so I can see why there are no players flocking to complete them. To celebrate, I opt to take on one of those trees. I needed to heal during the fight, but I managed just fine. I find Life Men's Stump, which is where I was supposed to pick up the trail of whatever menace is evading the guards. I interact with the sword wedged in there and I'm given a warning that I'm about to enter an instanced battle. Apparently I will be confined in the instance until the enemy is defeated or the objective is complete. I like this way of isolating the player for story important scenes and it just so happens that I'm placed into a cutscene. And the cutscene is fine. The standard square goofy voice acting is present but the story is delivered adequately. After an exchange between two odd people, we're assaulted by a rather large tree and his smaller but still large friends. The battle kind of happened without me. Maybe I was missing a trick, but I didn't seem to be outputting any damage except for on these little tiny things that kept appearing from the side. Maybe I was supposed to chain attacks with the NPCs, but I didn't work anything out before they finished off the boss for me. Once the tree goes down, it's back to Kingdom Hearts for another esoteric bit of storytelling. I can't fault these scenes really. They're put together exactly how I'd expect from a mainline Final Fantasy game. Apparently I'm a crystal bearer and that's important. It's also a throwback to the old Final Fantasy days and I really like that. I'm also shown that I'm one of many crystal bearers which nicely brings meaning to all of the other players in the world and their adventures are acknowledged at the same time as mine. This feels like the best use of the single player feel within a multiplayer setting. My god, Moogles are really irritating me in this. They used to be cute, what the hell happened? Also, their voices are really creepy. I kinda hope these two people are not important for the story for too long because they're not quite as endearing as I think they were supposed to be. There's a corpse of an Ixal chieftain nearby, and that's significant for whatever reason. I pull the sword from the stump, claim England for the dragon people, and head back to report my success. I ask about the two who showed up to help, and apparently they're already well-known, helpful individuals. I gain a level and unlock what's called a roll action. These are abilities that are shared across classes that fulfill the same roles. This means that once unlocked, I can use this ability so long as I stay as classes that can operate as a healer, and I like this. Then I speak to the lady again, and she gives me a generic collect quest with an attached delivery to someone else, and I feel like I've been politely told to piss off because there's nothing else for me here. When I do the quest, the recipient of the items tells me that what I did is actually quite important to the prevention of a disease called the Creeping Death. It once claimed the lives of many thousands, but thanks to medicinal breakthroughs, it's little more than a localised threat now. I like this because it makes the little quest feel connected to the world, it feels important. It helps with the connection to my character, it helps with the connection to the setting, and it makes those throwaway quests feel just a little bit more significant. I'm then sent on another collect quest to retrieve items that a poor soul had dropped in a panic. And I can see why, because these spider looking things are creepy as hell. Which brings me neatly to my next point, the enemy design so far has been really nice. There's only been one recolored enemy and that came with a reasonable explanation during a fate quest and the variety helps lift some of the potential boredom from the early game combat. I'm fully aware that this is functionally the same as World of Warcraft which I had issues with but this is somehow less boring. I don't have an explanation for this so far so I'll just go with the spell casting bar is more pleasing to look at. It's ridiculous, I know, but this is my review, I'll say what I want. I scrolled over an item that I auto-looted in the chat box and a handy tooltip popped up, and this is nice, I should look out for this in other games. Oh, and this handover system has been explained to me by a friend and it no longer bugs me, so thanks Claw. I'm being given a lot of collect and deliver quests in order to move me around the area, which is not great, not terrible. It does the job reasonably and I'm being given small self-contained stories relevant to the area that I'm playing in. Lots of these stories are conveniently connected to genocidal activities regarding local wildlife making them kill X quest effectively but I'm still not bothered by this for some reason. One of my quest rewards is this rather dashing robe. Now sadly it hides my pointy hat but technically I'm still wearing it so I'll just try to adjust. It does have an excellent interaction with spellcasting and looks fantastic whooshing in the particle effect so I think I can get used to this. 
And here I accidentally dropped into a group of enemies and I gave myself the biggest combat test yet. Now I'd love to tell you that I made clever use of my spells and prevailed with skill and wit, but I panic healed and mashed one until they all died, which is close enough, right? I did, however, make use of the sleep spell and found out how useful it is when you're outnumbered. The story quest then takes me down the cinematic route once again and I'm happy to see this storytelling continue so frequently. I like the visual style and it's being put to good use. Apparently a hearer was attacked by a true shadow. I don't know the significance of these words yet, but I do think I'm about to find out. This is a quest in which I'm not given a choice to accept, which not only keeps the single player experience feeling, but it's also a sneaky way of pacing the story and I commend that design. It's applied a sense of urgency but not for the entire story and this is nice. I absolutely hate false urgency. Also is it just my eyes or is my robe wet? while it's raining. I mean, obviously it would be wet, but is there a dynamic visual difference? I'll need to check that out when the weather changes. I set about rescuing the conjurers that had accompanied the hero, and the dialogue does a good job of making this true shadow seem like a powerful force. I also join a fate quest here because the area overlaps into the quest zone and that gives me that good old fear of missing out reflex which I do my best to ignore. When I find the hero, another member of Organization 13 animates a large golem and I enter a boss fight and this fight was pretty good. Positioning was important and the large smash attacks that it did felt dangerous. I used my sleep spell to try and create some distance between us for spell casting but it was the difference between one spell so I didn't bother repeating that. The whole setup of this fight reminded me of Kingdom Hearts and I say this a lot so I'll try switching to say in classic square from time to time. The two idiots that found me before show up and the cutscene confirms that they are important characters and I will have to endure their presence. I got used to the other square characters in other games so this will be no different I'm sure. On my way out I get to help finish the fate quest that I started and that felt nice and now it's finally time to report back to mother. I can't pronounce her name but she tells me I made her proud. Why can't I make my real mother proud like this? This whole experience so far has been just as comfortable as a regular Final Fantasy experience and that is a great feeling. Despite obvious MMO mechanics, the world and gameplay come together to feel both new and interesting but also familiar and welcoming to a JRPG fan. My class feels like a healer, which means I'm probably not getting the best combat experience but it'll be nice to feel useful later down the line when I'm keeping people alive. Negative points? I don't really have many yet. I think it'll be things that have to wear me down over time. I'm sure there are things that I like now that I'll feel differently about in 50 hours time and I think I'll wait until then to post any more updates. If you made it this far then please comment your favourite colour of chocobo and if you want more first impressions on various MMOs then the subscribe button is the best way to get more from me. But for now, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.